do you tell a 10 year plus story in under 10 minutes? A story of many victories, big and small, a story of many defeats, both big and small. It's a story of vision, passion, dedication, and focus. And really, it starts at the beginning. I would say immediately after coming to Savannah, I came in January of 2009, and I believe in 2010, we were actually toying with the idea and looking at buildings and, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's been a long journey. Toying with the idea doesn't immediately make it so especially when you're dealing with the kinds of properties you find in historic downtown Savannah, Georgia. Leasing wasn't an option. The state would only be able to purchase a building that would eventually become the home of Savannah Technical College's new campus, a downtown campus that would be home for a sweeping variety of uses. Exactly what they were hadn't made it to a notepad yet, but one thing everyone at Savannah Tech agreed upon was that there was a need. I think probably what really piqued my interest, I had gone on vacation, the last one I ever had, I think, to uh, uh, Napa Valley and went to uh, visit the Culinary Institute of America, in, I think it was in Greystone, um, and was just blown away. Um, I thought, this costs a lot of money, our students wouldn't have that opportunity, but there's no reason with Savannah and the foodie scene growing like it is that we could not make something like this happen. Money, as is typically the case, was the biggest obstacle. But the best way to address one of those was head on. When I joined the foundation board, we were, we were talking about a downtown culinary. We rolled into a capital campaign that covered five or six different key areas for the college. One of those was the downtown culinary program. There had been, I think, six or seven other uh, views or looks at buildings and attempts at buildings and things like that but when we were doing the capital campaign we didn't really have a given site we had an idea on one um, and then so we, we went through the capital campaign without that the need was there because everyone agreed several cities of similar size across the south had a culinary school of some kind in their city charlotte north carolina obviously but also Asheville, north carolina and charleston south carolina each city and their state had invested in their community's infrastructure, the kind of investment that prepares your hospitality industry for decades to come. Keep in mind, this was years before Savannah's culinary renaissance of 2014. That was the year everything began to change in the hostess city. In a matter of six months, some of what have become this city's most popular restaurants opened their doors. The first was celebrity chef Hugh Atchison in the Florence then the Collins Quarter, then Trailer Park. By Christmas of 2014, the Gray had opened their doors, all restaurants that have received national acclaim. Savannah's culinary face was clearly changing, and the effort to secure her foundation had been underway for years. You know, for, for something like this to be able to make a huge impact on the community, it really has to be the right time in the right place. Uh, I believe it took all that time to be able to nail down the right place and this is it. It was thought that they had the right space a couple of different times. We worked on one building and then the owner decided that they didn't really want to sell so we hired a commercial real estate agent and any any good any good project any good campaign whatever it is it involves people. It took him less than two seconds to say the owner didn't want to sell simple enough but what will likely forever be glossed over is how much time, weeks, months, and over a year went into an attempt to secure a building everyone thought was a great fit, only to have the owner decide close to the end of the process that they actually didn't want to sell the building. That's time you never get back, but it's not personal, it's business. So you start all over and you resume your search. Harvey Gilbert helped us uh, locate some buildings Admittedly, I was a little bit further south of here um, in a different building, um, but we, we were able, when we came here and saw this, this, this was it. It was far more tedious and time consuming than that though, until the moment came when everyone agreed. They had happened upon their best prospect yet, right here at 7 West Bay Street. When we walked into that abandoned, empty property the first time, we knew that that area was going to be special because it would change lives of Savannians. 
Uh, well, you know, the, the building was uh, raw and bones, and, and we were saying, whoa, we, there's some work to be done here. But that's the way it is with all this stuff. This, this, the building we're sitting in here now, uh, it, it, when you first saw it, it, you had to envision what could be. But one is Club Rain, and it's right across the street from the Hyatt. And when we started having conversations about foot traffic and, you know, how, how many pedestrians and, and people were saying, well, that, you know, well, that's not, that's pretty good over here and that's pretty good over here. And uh, I think it was an old B&B &B paint store or something. I said, guys, that's, I mean, I, you can say all that, but there's absolutely no comparison to being on Bay Street right across from the Hyatt Regency. She was beautiful and the price range, everyone agreed, was manageable they all kind of knew it had to be. When we, when we finally were able to locate this place and we were in competition, so the, uh, someone was trying to lease it and probably keep it as a nightclub. And there was, no dis there was very little discussion. There was a short discussion about price and asking price and all that. And it was, if we want it, then that's, we need to get beyond that pretty quickly. So negotiations, probably not something you're going to need to spend a whole lot of time doing. I mean, it was so stunning that I think people on the foundation board will remember. I offered to buy it. And I made it clear to them that if they decided to go somewhere else, I didn't want them to hold it against me if I went in and took advantage of it and purchased it. That's how strongly I felt about this building. In fact, he said, if, if y'all want to do it, Anson and I will buy it. <laughs> and I concurred. I said, I just nodded. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know that I could have afforded it, but I don't have Doc's money. But <laughs> We ended up signing the agreement. It was, I remember it was rainy and it was cold and it was sometime between Christmas and New Year's. And the, uh, the person that was representing the family had the flu, so we were, we were back and forth trying to get a whole lot of people signing documents in a short amount of time during a holiday season because it, we were going out on a limb um, by signing a $2.8 million contract with, uh, with where we were because we still needed to raise some money back from that capital campaign. We weren't done yet. <laughs> When we signed the contract in December, we closed before June. So we, we, we had due diligence and, uh, and got a loan commitment in, in, a, in a relatively short time, but it all came together, which actually goes back to your previous point about support of the, biz, of the business community. So there's, there was a bank that, that believed and, and helped support. That was two years ago. One of them largely lost to a global pandemic. But the push to see this project through is one thing you can say has really never stopped. And why not? It's the big picture. And where is this all going? One day these dirt-filled rooms will fulfill a vision that started over a decade ago. I, I think one of the most overused terms in our community is game changer until we actually find one. This is a game changer. Uh, this is so important because all the top institutions like CIA, uh, school where I went to was Sullivan University. We had an operating bakery uh, as well as uh, a full you know, uh, dining room. Uh, Johnson Wales, they have them. So for us to be able to be in, comp in competition with that, we need to be able to have something like this. Initially, some of our biggest supporters were, well, you know, it's tough running a restaurant and, you know, that's a hard industry. And so we really had to do uh, some education on this is a culinary institute. The, the main business is not going to be running a restaurant. It's a training grounds for our baking and pastry and our culinary arts students. I'm extremely jealous of them. Um, I've been down to the building. It looks beautiful. I want to go inside of it. For it to be three stories where we can have everything, a bake shop, a culinary arts class, master classes. I'm so jealous. I will be there just as a customer when it opens. There's, there's book learning. There's learning that's done in a classroom. And in, in the culinary world, there's learning done in a kitchen. But that's not the same as the pressures of the real world. The responsibility of great educators is preparing students for what it's really going to be like in the real world. And we all know that they will. That's why we're all here. 
for these students, for their futures, and for Savannah's future. It is an absolute win, win, win scenario for Savannah Technical College, for the state of Georgia, for the city of Savannah, for our industry. Which takes us back to that original question. How do you tell the story of a decade worth of passion, focus, drive, and endurance in under 10 minutes? You don't, especially when the best chapters of that story are yet to be written. Tourism is a lot more than just buildings. It's, it's more than just uh, an experience of walking down a beautiful street, certainly one of the most beautiful streets in America you're going to find here. It's about the greater experience, the intangibles. Passionate people that are working to make these things happen for the Savannah Tech and uh, God bless them all, Gail Eubanks and Kathy, Dr. Kathy Love and, and uh, Chef Jean, uh, they're, they're just a, it's just a huge asset. The, the technical colleges throughout the state are a tremendous asset to our industry. But we hope that it looks effortless. Uh, we hope we make it look that way, but we know how many miles we have walked and how many buildings we have gone through, how many near misses that we've had. Uh, and I'm convinced now that those near misses with you know, other locations had a purpose. It was so when this uh, became available, it's perfect. <laughs>